Hi there, and welcome to this segment of the Well Architected Lens for Amazon DynamoDB. My name is Lee Hannigan, and I'm a specialist solutions architect with DynamoDB based out of Donegal in Ireland. Today, I'm going to be talking you through the reliability pillar from the Well Architected Framework. We're going to touch on key aspects such as resiliency, disaster recovery, system availability, and change management. So let's get to it. The reliability pillar focuses on ensuring a workload performs its intended function correctly and consistency when it's expected to. A resilient workload quickly recovers from failures to meet business and customer demand. Key topics include distributed system design, recovery planning, and how to handle change. First of all, let's look at some design considerations for the reliability pillar of the Well Architected Lens. We want to think about recovery point and recovery time objectives, and we will see how we can use certain DynamoDB features to help us achieve those objectives. We want to think about resiliency and how we can build highly available architectures. We want to make sure we're handling our exceptions elegantly and that we configure our SDK clients to be highly available and resilient. If you're using DynamoDB Accelerator as a caching solution, we also want to make sure it's highly available and resilient, understanding the importance of monitoring the system and setting up alarms to notify you when a specific event occurs is paramount when architecting reliably. Let's now get into our first topic of the Well Architected Lens for reliability, which is disaster recovery. Disaster recovery focuses on one-time recovery objectives in response to natural disasters, large-scale technical failures, or human threats such as an attack or an error. Having backups and redundant workload components in place is the start of your disaster recovery strategy. RTO and RPO are objectives for your restoration of your workload. Set these based on your business needs. Implement a strategy to meet those objectives, considering locations and function of the workload resources and data. The probability of disruption and cost of recovery are also key factors to help inform the business value of providing disaster recovery for a workload. Let's have a closer look at disaster recovery strategies, which you will need to define based on your business needs. Recovery point objective, or RPO, is determined by how much data your application can afford to lose if a disaster occurs. For example, if your business needs dictate that you require a low RPO, then using DynamoDB's point-in-time recovery is a good option. With a PITR, you can restore your table to any point in time within the previous 35 days. However, with this solution, you could have a high RTO, which is recovery time objective. RTO defines how much downtime your application can afford, which is determined by how quickly you can recover from a disaster. Using DynamoDB Global Tables, for example, can allow you to define a low RTO in the event of failure, as you can just simply switch your application to access the table in another region. Having both a low RPO and RTO can be difficult, and it depends on which specific disaster you may be encountering. For example, an application outage can be a vastly different recovery procedure than a data corruption issue. So let's get into some of the backup and restore options that DynamoDB has to offer. DynamoDB offers you multiple backup and restore options for your disaster recovery needs. On-demand backups allow you to create full backups of your DynamoDB tables data for data archiving, helping you meet corporate and governmental regulatory requirements. You can backup tables from a few megabytes to hundreds of terabytes of data with no impact on performance or availability to your production applications. On-demand backups are instant, regardless of the size of your table, so you don't have to worry about backup schedules or long-running processes. In addition to on-demand backups, you can also enable continuous backups for point-in-time recovery. This gives you the ability to restore to any point in time within the last 35 days at the per second level granularity. All backups are automatically encrypted, catalogued, easily discoverable, and retained until you explicitly delete them. You can execute backup and restore operations with a single click in the AWS Management Console or with a single API call using any of our SDKs. You can also use the AWS Backup Service, which is a fully managed backup service that makes it easy to centralize and automate data protection and the backing up of data across AWS resources. You can create backup policies and plans. You can tag them. You can use these plans to define your backup requirements, like the frequency, retention, and expiration of those backup copies. And you can do this all in a policy-based way. AWS Backup enables customers to centralize and automate data protection across AWS services. AWS Backup offers a cost-effective, fully managed policy-based service that further simplifies data protection at scale. AWS Backup also helps customers support the regulatory compliance obligations and meet business continuity goals. 
Then in Mode customers can opt in to use the AWS backup service to manage their on-demand backups. Customers now can define cross-account and cross-region backup copy preferences, enabling them to support the regulatory compliance or business policies for data protection. They can also tag on-demand backups to simplify cost allocation, define cold storage lifecycle preferences to reduce backup costs. The new on-demand backups will be encrypted with the AWS Key Management Service key on your AWS Backup Vault. In terms of restore times for your DynamoDB backups, Service Metrics shows that 95% of customers' table restores complete in less than one hour. However, restore times are directly related to the configuration of your tables, such as the size of your table and the number of underlying partitions, and other related variables. A best practice when planning for disaster recovery is to regularly document average restore completion times and establish how these times affect your overall recovery time objective. Creating an on-demand backup for your DynamoDB table is relatively simple. You can do so through the AWS backup service as we previously discussed. You can also use the DynamoDB web console or any of the SDKs to create an on-demand backup. Another option to backup your DynamoDB table is with point-in-time recovery. Point-in-time recovery provides continuous, incremental backups of your table with a retention period of up to 35 days. Just like on-demand backups, you can perform backup operations with no impact to performance. PITR helps to protect your table from accidental writes or delete operations, allowing you to restore to any second within the last 35 days. This feature helps you maintain a low recovery point objective. Another important aspect of your disaster recovery planning is the periodic testing of the restore process to ensure that it meets your disaster recovery requirement needs. It's important that you set up runbooks, which are detailed and easy to follow, to ensure your restore process is efficient and to provide you with minimal downtime. So let's move on to system availability. DynamoDB automatically spreads the data and traffic for your tables over a sufficient number of servers to handle your throughput and storage requirements, all while maintaining consistent and fast performance. All of your data is stored in solid state disks or SSDs and is automatically replicated across multiple availability zones in an AWS region. This provides built-in high availability and data durability. Let's have a look at how that works. So when writing an item to a table, it uses the value of the partition key as an input to its internal hash function. The output value from this hash function determines which partition the item should be stored. The write is then processed by the leader of that partition and then is synchronously replicated to its followers in different AZs. We can see that we use three AZs for DynamoDB, which runs a highly available and highly durable service. So we now know that DynamoDB uses partitions across multiple availability zones and that partition management is handled entirely by DynamoDB. We also know that writes to a table is handled by that partition's leader storage node, which may seem like a single point of failure. To overcome this, we use Paxos to manage leader elections. Each of the storage nodes participate in a membership group and heartbeat amongst each other every 1.5 seconds. If the leader heartbeats are not received, one of the storage nodes will offer to take over as leader, and one of the nodes with the latest version will be elected. As DynamoD is a fully managed serverless service, we can expect that high availability is built in by default. DynamoDB offers a service level agreement on availability, which is four nines of availability for a single region and five nines of availability for DynamoDB global tables. This equates to less than five minutes downtime per year. Global tables build on DynamoDB's global footprint to provide you with a fully managed multi-region and multi-master database that provides fast, local, read and write performance for massively scaled global applications. Global tables replicate your DynamoDB tables automatically across your choice of AWS regions. Global tables eliminate the difficult work of replicating data between regions and resolve an update conflicts, enabling you to focus on your application's business logic. In addition, global tables enable your applications to stay highly available even in the unlikely event of isolation or degradation of an entire AWS region. If a single AWS region becomes isolated or degraded, your application can redirect to a different region and perform reads and writes against a different table replica. You can apply custom business logic to determine when to redirect requests to another AWS region. If a region becomes isolated or degraded, then would be keeps track of any writes that have been performed but have not yet been propagated to all the table replicas. When that region comes back online, then would be resumes propagating any pending writes from that region to the replica tables in other regions. It also resumes propagating writes from other replica tables to the region that is now back online. So now let's take a look at reliability with DynamoDB Accelerator. For even more performance, Amazon DynamoDB Accelerator is a fully managed, highly available, in-memory cache for DynamoDB 
that delivers up to 10 times performance improvement from milliseconds to microseconds, even at millions of requests per second. DAX is all the heavy lifting required to add in-memory acceleration to your download retables without requiring developers to manage cache and validation, data population, or cluster management. Now you can focus on building great applications for your customers without worrying about performance at scale. Unlike DynamoDB, DAX is not a serverless service and requires you to make certain design considerations to ensure that your DAX cluster is highly available. First of all is your node type. It is recommended to use the latest node type for your cluster. For production workloads, the R instance family is recommended, while the T type instance family are burstful instances and do not provide fixed performance. Another important aspect is your node placement. Do not place all of your cluster's nodes in a single availability zone. In this configuration, your DAX cluster becomes unavailable if there's an availability zone failure. Another aspect is the node count. For production usage, we strongly recommend using DAX with at least three nodes, where each node is placed in a different availability zone for high availability. Three nodes are required for DAX clusters to be fault tolerant. So we've now reached the end of this segment of the well-architected lens for DynamoDB. Here are some questions that you should think about when architecting reliably for DynamoDB. How are you meeting your RPO and RTO requirements with DynamoDB? How do you back up your data? How do you support disaster recovery requirements? How does your application handle exceptions from DynamoDB? How do you alert on failures? How do you manage regional failovers? How do you support high availability architecture deployments? And that concludes the reliability segment for the well-architected lens for DynamoDB. I want to thank you for sticking with me throughout the video and should you require further information, please check out our documentation, which is linked below the video. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video of the reliability pillar from the well-architected lens for Amazon DynamoDB. Please be sure to check out the rest of the videos in the series, which cover the rest of the pillars of the well-architected framework from AWS. Thank you and bye.